Hello and welcome back. This week, we'll look at the birth of the modern world in our study of history from 1500 to the present. Up until now, we've been talking about what we might call pre-modern societies. The word modern, as used by historians, is usually applied to events beginning after 1750. We'll use it to describe the Atlantic revolutions, profound political changes that emerged on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean between the end of the 18th and the middle of the 19th century. We'll begin with the revolution in the English colonies of North America in the 1770s. Then we'll move to the French Revolution in 1789 and consider the effects of both revolutions on Europe in their wake. We'll also study a slave rebellion in the French colony of Haiti in 1791 that led to the establishment of the Republic of Haiti, the first independent black republic in the world. Finally, we'll learn about the political changes that swept through the Spanish colonies in the Americas between 1808 and 1824 that created the modern nations of Latin America. This week also marks a new approach to learning in this course. In the past weeks, you've watched introductory videos that describe in modest detail the historical narrative of the periods we've covered. Starting this week, you'll become a more active participant in the building of that historical narrative. In effect, you'll become the historian, analyzing text and answering the big historical questions of the topics we study. Doing so will require that you use the analytical tools you've developed in evaluating sources for your information literacy blogs, tools that will aid you in developing a critical interpretation of historical events, their causes, and their impact on our world today. In many ways, this shift in analytical approach parallels the revolutionary transformations we study this week. The Atlantic revolutions were inspired by political thinkers who aimed to radically alter the relationship between government and its citizens. Influenced by the scientific revolution, and driven by ideas of equality and democracies, Enlightenment thinkers, in particular Locke, Montesquieu, Voltaire, and Rousseau, challenged the long-established tradition of monarchical rule in Europe and the Americas. The revolutionary movements were first sparked in North America with the Declaration of Independence from the British Crown and the creation of the United States in 1776. Other revolutions quickly followed, and within less than 50 years, the seeds of revolution had spread throughout Europe. Most of the Americas had won their independence from colonial rule and established new sovereign nations without kings or queens. The political theories that underlay much of this revolutionary activity were the work of John Locke, an English philosopher whose ideas on politics and the origins and purpose of the state had a sweeping influence on the Enlightenment thinking that emerged in the late 17th century. Central to Locke's view was the notion that all humans are born equal and that all individuals enjoy what he called natural rights. Locke outlined these ideas in his two treatises on civil government, which was published in 1690. For Locke, the three natural rights are life, liberty, and property. The right to life means literally the right not to be killed. The right to liberty means the right to act as you wish, so long as you don't interfere with someone else's right to act as they wish. And finally, the right to property means the right to the fruits of your labor. Because these were natural rights, they originated with nature and were not conferred by a monarch, they could also not be taken away. As such, Locke argued that the government's responsibility was to protect its people's natural rights. The theory of a social contract, that is, an implicit agreement among the members of a society, to cooperate for mutual benefits, dictated that the government's role was to represent and not reign over or oppress the people. If the government didn't represent its people and defend their natural rights, the people were entitled to replace their government. This notion 
of equal representation challenged the very core of traditional monarchical rule. Locke's ideas were extended by other influential Enlightenment thinkers, in particular three French philosophers, Montesquieu, who argued that government should be divided into legislative, executive, and judicial branches, and be guided by a system of checks and balances, ensuring that no one branch was more powerful than another. Voltaire, who wrote numerous essays, plays, and political satires targeting the king, the French state, and the Catholic Church. And Rousseau, whose notion of a general will became a cornerstone of any democratic claim to political legitimacy.